Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News update. A new COVID-19 vaccine trial begins today in Langley Park, one of the area's coronavirus hotspots. Researchers will be giving a new trial vaccine to patients at CASA and will follow those participants for several years. We'll be welcoming folks um, into, into our office where they're going to be, um, we're going to be administering the, the, the Moderna uh, uh, vaccine to them. Um, and running observations and, and going to be observing them over honestly a two year period of time to see how effective that virus is in our community. Um, so right now we're recruiting a lot of our leaders, recruiting a lot of our members, again, individuals that have um, these are individuals that are very vulnerable to, to, the, cont to the contagion um, and making sure that they're part of this and they're at the front steps of really saving all of our lives ultimately and making sure that this vaccine is, is effective for everyone. Escobar says the goal is to make the vaccine safe and effective first and then find ways to make it accessible and affordable. The trial program is being conducted by the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Well, nearly 40 Maryland companies and universities are now working on COVID vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostic tests. That's according to the governor. He also says life science companies in Maryland have secured more than $3 billion for vaccine development. Meantime, the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in the state is close to 105,000. The health department today reports 567 new cases. Meantime, 13 Maryland hospitals have begun testing patient blood samples to see if they developed COVID-19 antibodies. MedStar Southern Maryland in Prince George's is one of the hospitals. It serves an area hit hard by the virus. The goal of the study is to gain insight into how the virus spreads. Build upon that knowledge, researchers hope to learn how many people develop antibodies, how much and what kind they make, and how long the antibodies stay around. Well, three Prince George's County police officers are shot while responding to a call. It happened last night on the 1300 block of Capitol View and Terrace, Capitol View Terrace in Hyattsville just after 630. Investigators say the officers were responding to a call about a home invasion. Interim Police Chief Hector Valles says within seconds of the arrival, they came under gunfire and were ambushed. One officer was shot in the chest, another in the back with their bullets. Uh, booth proof vest protecting them from more serious harm. A third officer was hit in the foot. One in particular uh, who I met with tonight and I can tell you that he lay there, he's uh, waiting to go into surgery and his concern was not for himself, but he was so shaken and he said, I just hope this doesn't hold me back. I love this community and I want to continue in this job. All three are expected to fully recover. Police did make two arrests in connection with the shooting. County Councilman uh, Chair Todd Turner released a statement condemning the shootings and wishing the officers a speedy recovery. Unrest erupts in the streets of Kenosha, Wisconsin over overnight after two police officers shoot a black man in his back. It happened at around 5 o'clock. Officers were responding to a call for a domestic incident. Witnesses say the shooting victim, Jacob, Jacob Blake, was trying to break up a fight when police tried to stun him with a taser. Cell phone video shows Blake walking toward an SUV with police following close behind with their guns drawn. When Blake opens the door of the car to get inside, shots ring out. He's flown to an area hospital where he's listed in serious condition. Condition. Police have not commented on what led to the shooting, which was witnessed by his three sons. The city has declared a state of emergency. Well, the 2020 Republican National Convention kicks off today. This year's theme is honoring the great American story. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and Donald Trump Jr. are among the scheduled speakers. Parts of the convention are taking place in Charlotte, North Carolina. A roll call of the states took place this morning as delegates nominated President Trump for a second term. Indiana is proud to cast all of our 58 votes to keep America great again by unanimously supporting Donald J. Trump for President of the United States of America. There were 38 votes from Maryland. Mike Pence was also renominated today. The COVID-19 pandemic doesn't appear to be having a negative impact on the housing market in the county. The Prince George's County Association of Realtors is reporting its highest July new pending sales in 10 years. The association says new pending sales for the month were 7.3 percent higher than July of 2019. Yolanda Muckle says the reasons for the increased activity are supply and demand and low interest rates. You have people getting interest rates in the threes. I mean, I actually heard someone who had it in the high two. So you have interest rates being low, lack of inventory, all of that is factoring in. 
And because some people feel as though the pandemic, people must not be buying. So they're wondering, should I put my house on the market? And they're realizing now is a good time to put your house on the market if you want to take advantage of all of the, the fact that buyers have lower interest rates, that you're getting more money for your property than you potentially would have gotten. It's just a matter of figuring out, okay, what do I do next? Muckle says the average July sold price was up 8.4% compared to July of 2019. And Maryland State Police are investigating a motorcycle crash that killed a Morgan State University student over the weekend. The victim is 20-year-old Jordan Cofield. The incident happened at around 10 o'clock last night on northbound I-795 in Baltimore County. Police say Cofield crashed after losing control of his motorcycle. He died at the scene. He was a member of the Morgan State football team. Prince George says it's ready for, to accept bids for its public-private partnership plan to build new schools in the county. On Friday, the school system said four developers have expressed interest in the project. The contract could potentially cost $1 billion over 30 years. School board member Rahila Ahmed is concerned that that cost is more than originally estimated. Originally, the rhetoric that was communicated to the board and to the public around the P3 initiative was that it would be faster and it would be cheaper than the traditional financing methods that we have and that we use. At Friday's meeting, it was confirmed that that is not the case. Uh, the project will be more expensive than traditional finance measures and not as fast as was originally told to us, albeit it's still faster than the traditional method. What was confirmed through the questioning was that the total cost of the project would be around $990 million, which is $90 million more than the original price tag that was told to us. Bids on the P3 project are due by September 14th. The winning bidder would build six schools, middle schools in the county by 2024. Well, the Maryland State Board of Education is hosting virtual meetings today and tomorrow. This morning session began at 9. Tomorrow starts at 9.30. Board members and presenters will take part in the meetings, which are open to the public. Agenda items include Maryland's recovery plan and a discussion of pre-K student discipline data. The board is allowing public comment by telephone only tomorrow. For more information, visit MarylandPublicSchools.org. Well, two federal courthouses in Maryland will resume in-person trials this week. The U.S. Attorney's Office will prosecute cases at the Baltimore and Greenbelt courthouses. The cases include the U.S. versus Chavez in Baltimore and the U.S. versus Henry Kenner II. Anyone entering the building must wear a mask. Spectators will not be allowed in the courtrooms for jury trials due to space limitations. A dedicated area has been set for aside for spectators to watch uh, trials via closed-circuit TV. Well, the county continues to lend a helping hand to families through its weekly grab-and-go meals. The county executive, along with many volunteers, helped to pass out food to families in need today. Through a new partnership with Sodexo Magic, the county gave away 840 boxes of fresh produce at the Curry Administration Building. The produce included cabbage, apples, salad mix, tomatoes, and mushrooms. Since the pandemic began, the county has begun giving food to families through its Stand Up and Deliver program. For more information on food distribution, site nearest you, visit at the county's website at PrinceGeorge'sCountyMD.gov. Well, nationwide teen grocery de delivery services for seniors is now expanding to Prince George's. Teens Helping Seniors delivers groceries and medications to seniors and vulnerable populations. Thanks to a Parksdale High student, a local chapter was founded right here in the county. It's currently seeking volunteers. Stephanie Rodriguez Lucero says the service can help reduce the spread of COVID-19. We're going to need the help. It is really important. It might not happen to you, but it is happening to a lot of people around us. And the way this is affecting people, it is, we are the young ones. We're probably the healthiest ones at this point, and we can do something about it. And if we can, why shouldn't we? The delivery service started in Montgomery County. For more information, visit teenshelpingseniors.org. And preseason training continues for the Washington football team. The defense is expected to carry the team this year. Not much is expected from the offense led by a young quarterback. But according to veteran running back Adrian Peterson, the offense does have potential. The offense is, you know, it's something that I'm really excited about. A lot of guys are excited about what they're asking us to do. Um, we, have some, we have some big roles in this offense, you know, being able to, you know, spread our defense out and, throw different looks 
you know, really make it challenging for a defense to stop us. And I feel like with our skill set, the receiver position, uh, the tight end position, quarterback, running backs, office line is, 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 is looking good and shaping up as well. And, uh, you know, this running back room is incredible. We have so much talent, you know, from, you know, uh, Antonio Gibson to JD to Peyton to Bryce. Like all these guys are unique in, in their own way. And, you know, just being out here and seeing, um, seeing them go through this offense where it presents uh, opportunities for the running back to, to make plays. And sometimes having a couple of us out there um, on the field at the same time uh, is, it's exciting to, to see. Adrian Peterson is expected to be one of the team's top running backs this year. And that wraps up CTV News for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. Good night. For the latest information on COVID-19 in Maryland, visit the State Health Department website. That's health.maryland.gov. Again, health.maryland.gov. Click the link to the COVID-19 information portal. There you'll find all the latest information about coronavirus. You'll find daily updates on cases and fatalities. Answers to questions about testing and the governor's stay-at-home order are available as well. For specific information about Prince George's, visit PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. That's PrinceGeorgesCountyMD.gov. The site offers information about local services for residents and businesses. There's a link for COVID-19 relief donations. Also, food pantry locations are listed. And if you have any questions, call the county COVID-19 hotline at 301-883-6627. That's 301-883-6627. My, my God. God. It's another sad day in America. Painful to be introduced to George Floyd during his last breath with a cop's knee on his neck. On his neck. He, he deserves, deserves so, much, so more. much more. How many black lives have to be taken for something, for something to be done? We are not a threat. I am shaking as I talk. This has got to stop. We are sick of it. We need conviction. I just want us all to live. The death will not stop, stop until the powers it. that be are finally held accountable. Don't look away from the truth until every one of us are free from white supremacy. The world stands with you. Criminalizing and killing of black and brown bodies is not new. It's as old as America. It's just getting filled with. Do you know what it feels like to be to hunted? Be hunted? To have a new hashtag for a dead black person every single day? How does one plan a life if they aren't sure they will have a life to plan? Deborah Dan, George Floyd. His name was George Floyd. Say his name. Say his name. George Floyd. Say his name. Say their names. Once again and always, we fight for justice. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Rest in power, beautiful. Go to blacklivesmatter.com. Children are spending more time at home. Teachers, parents, neighbors, and friends, it's up to you to keep them safe. Now more than ever, it's important to stay connected. By phone, video chat, and social media. If you have concerns or see changes in a child, be there for them. Ask questions. Seek help. Report suspected child abuse or neglect. I am what child hunger looks like in America. I am a nine-year-old boy who hopes a friend invites me to a sleepover so I can have dinner. I am a 15-year-old girl who goes for walks during lunch so my friends won't know I don't have anything to eat. I am a 13-year-old boy who gets into fights at school just because I'm hungry. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in seven American children who struggle with hunger. Kids you pass by every day but never knew they were hungry. Feeding America 200 food banks strong.